So um, I'm going to make this last part here for tonight, maybe talk about the three of the other abusers and narcissists I dealt with in my life. There was the lady that tried and succeeded in breaking up my family. Um, there was my ex-business partner that ripped me off for a bunch of cash and tax taxes who died a horrible death and then um, and then there's and then the last one was a guy who I'm pretty sure is a um, is a pedophile and I'm the one and the only one who could report him and I got flack for doing it so okay so first I'll talk about the lady that helped break my family apart I'm going to put my 3D printed logo a little more prominently there so y'all can see it okay. there just kind of in the background that's good so um yeah, I haven't cleaned up anything, so ignore my mess. And audio booms from hitting the desk. So this lady was from Child Protective Services, and we called her. My boyfriend was 18 years old. I was 28. <laughs> I was literally picking him up from high school. And um, so that was 22 years ago. So I was picking up from high school. My sister was about the same age as him, a little younger. And she needed somebody to confide to at school. She liked him because he was gay and he wasn't me. So she could talk about and even family stuff without worrying about, you know, you know, talking about things that I wouldn't want to talk about. And uh, he suggested that we call Child Protective Services because my mom wasn't figuring out that there was something seriously wrong with my sister. She was blacking out for hours a day and it turned out she was really badly diabetic and she was going into a diabetic coma like almost every day she could have died. So we call Child Protective Services. They send this policeman and an investigator out. An investigator seems to be this really nice lady and turns out later on that she was cheating on her husband with the policeman so she gets my sister out of CPS it's this huge long drama that spanned years actually by the time my sister wasn't even a minor anymore so it didn't even matter at one point thankfully but she broke our family apart because she you know my mom is my mom is you know she's 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 just a narcissist she can't help what she is but anyway yeah she did affect my sister's life and yeah it's a good thing that she was gotten out of the house but what this lady did was she had me help her design a book and the book got a lot of accolades because it was really beautifully done i d designed like 200 pages this artist dude i was friends with convinced her that I had ripped off some of his art like I hadn't removed it from the book properly he and I had, had a falling apart because he felt he wasn't getting enough recognition so he destroyed he destroyed the um the book he made her rip out all all of my art which made it really ugly and bad but um so anyway the book's now worth a thousand dollars the version that I did is now worth a thousand bucks on like Amazon and stuff no joke I'll show you guys the listing and uh, yeah so she broke up my family she tried to steal the book from me she convinced my sister that I was the bad guy so now my sister doesn't even talk to me anymore so now it's like I have no family at all like no family no blood family anyway my family are the people that are my friends now so um yeah so 
um, I had a little bit of vindication with that book deal because years later I met this lawyer and he um, he got me five thousand dollars for her to sign the book over to me or for me to sign the book over to her so that I would give up any claim to the book and she would just get to sell the book but you know she um, she chose to write me off just then at that point after she handed me the check for five grand and then the lawyer that introduced me there that helped me with her with the book thing date raped me I think it was 40 years old so I think that was about 10 years ago he roofied me he told me it was muscle relaxant for my sore shoulder and it was turned out to be rufalin or something like that and I remember waking up trying to tear my way out of a leather bag and I remember him going oh Adam looks good in chains Adam looks good in chains and I was wrapped in chains and naked and I remembered it's flashed back to me like he'd had me posing for him naked and he was taking pictures of me with his cell phone and I was agreeing to it because I was out of my mind with whatever that pill was like to this day I don't really know what it was but when I heard about Bill Cosby and all that other stuff I kind of immediately believed the women because it had happened to me and uh, so that was the the first and that was two of the that was Oh, two, I'm sorry, two of the four people, um, the lawyer dude, the CPS lady, uh, also briefly touched on the Brazilian, the Brazilian narcissist who used to cheat on his wife and brag about it. He was fucking abandoned me like at Waikiki Beach, swimming in the middle of the night, hoping, probably hoping I'd get eaten by sharks because he knew it was like shark infested and didn't tell me then when I went back to the car shivering cold and naked because he just almost naked in my speedo <clears throat> in Waikiki at midnight <clears throat> he was in the car furiously making out with a prostitute and he told me later that um, I was imagining it and um, that was shitty but anyway then he cheated me out of taxes he tried to steal all my equipment tried to lock me out of my military trailer which suddenly didn't belong to me according to him but then he tried to steal all the computers equipment out of it too he didn't get away with that so that's three of the four more narcissists i want to tell you about oh and the last abuser which i don't know what to call him but he was this dude that um that used to live here and before he pretty much permanently left the place for me to take care of it forever I guess he um, took me out to lunch with him he was gonna help me clean up some of the garbage and stuff and even then I had a hard time getting people to help me haul the garbage even if I paid him gas money they wouldn't come so anyway he took me out to lunch and then in the middle of the conversation actually it kind of ended the conversation for me so I don't really remember what he said after that but he suddenly goes people have such a problem with pedophilia I don't know what their problem is and for some reason it just really struck me like why the fuck would somebody say something like that well months after he left I was going through his nightstand and I found all these you know like anime hentai cartoons of really young looking girls and then there was this pictures of these young girls like kind of looking up their chests like not nude but definitely inappropriate like their breasts are permanently you know not permanently I mean prominently displayed in the middle of the photo and clearly the emphasis on their breasts and this girl looked like she was like fucking 12 years old like way underage like not I mean you know I mean, there's a lot of gay guys that'll look at guys in magazines that are supposed to be 18 and they look like 19 or 20 years old. And okay, you know, I've done some of that too. You know, who doesn't like young guys, but not fucking 12 years old, not 14 years old, not 15 years old. What the fuck is wrong with you people, you know? So that was, there was, that photo was in there and his hentai cartoons and 
several other things that were looked really super iffy, including these postcards from girls that said like, oh, I can't wait to meet you in person. And oh, um, it was really nice hanging out with you or, you know, are you going to help me with my schoolwork? And so there's letters in there from young girls, too. And it turned to comes to find out that fucking works in children's camps like dude what are you doing saying those things and having those photos and fucking work in children's camps what are you doing so one day when my landlord pissed me off really bad by I think I'd had my second first or second flood in here with the water up to about where two feet up I'm st this is a standing desk because my back problems don't allow me to sit down anymore. But yeah, about two feet off the ground right here, the water was just flowing through the house and couldn't get, landlord wouldn't come through with any of the promised sandbags or concrete to keep the water out, none of that. My mom wouldn't come through, my dad wouldn't come through, none of that. So uh, I was talking to my landlord on the phone one day and I get got pissed off and I said, do you know that your your tenant might have been a pedophile and she just got silent and I'm like yeah I found this and this and that we had this conversation and I don't know I think you should check into it instead of telling me oh and then she offered me money and I accepted but then she didn't didn't give me the money so that was another thing that she didn't do she offered me money for my injuries because I'd gotten injured, you know, working on this property and dealing with the meth people. And uh, so I told her all that. And you know what it got me? It got me two years of really bad treatment from her and total silence. I didn't hear from her for like two and a half years after that. But uh, she sure listened to everything my narcissistic neighbors lied about me and stuff that my... That, that guy over there a couple blocks down that I dated she probably listened to stuff that he said too you know he repeated word for word stuff I'd said during sex so I knew that he'd spied on me you know and he had to be creeping outside that window right there to hear it so there's just no way because this the property goes a good distance back and all around on all sides so he really had to get up <laughs> well we were <laughs> we were kind of loud but not that loud so you know yeah and I'll take a video tomorrow so you guys can see how what a quick shortcut it is between my house and his if you don't think that's happening but you think you're going crazy you should pay attention to your instincts, you know, because you might be just getting but gaslit that it's not happening. You want to stay safe from these people. These people are psychos, you know, family members, business partners, people you don't know online that get really close to. You don't know who anybody is really without doing a background check. Do a background check, you know, get your pay for a pay for an online protection service pay for a service that wipes your data pay for services that check automatically where payments come from you should get all those things you know I, I should always practice more of what I preach but you know some of that stuff is expensive but if you have enough money to pay for some protection for yourself you should you should pay for some protection you know, if you can't afford a bodyguard, you can at least afford to defend yourself. <laughs>